Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at how to use Sketch Engine to find negated verbs in a corpus of French and to do that we will use corpus query language, short CQL, um, to find all of these um, negated verbs and their various forms. But first, let's get started with negation in French. So how does it work? For those of you who already speak French, you might want to skip some of this, um, but it might be good as a reminder to then be able to come up with a good query. So let's start with a sentence that's not negated. Je porte des lunettes, so I wear glasses. And if we want to negate this, then uh, we would add the ne and the pas. Ne comes um, before the verb, so je ne porte. Um, and then pas comes after the verb, je ne porte pas de lunettes. And this would be the sort of standard negation uh, form. Now, if we have a verb that uh, starts with a vowel, like um, avoir in the third person uh, present tense, um, here we have elle a des lunettes, so she has glasses. And if we want to negate this, then the ne is uh, changed to an apostrophe, um, so that we can then uh, more easily pronounce it. Elle n'a pas de lunettes. And then again, the pas comes after the verb. Now, in spoken and informal French, very often we drop the ne or the n apostrophe. So we have elle a des lunettes. Um, and in the negation, elle a pas de lunettes. And so we're dropping the n apostrophe or the ne form before the verb. And this is very common in spoken and informal French. Now, there are other negation markers in French. It's not just par. Par is the most common one. It's the not in uh, English. And so uh, this would be the most common form. And I've always put the ne in brackets because, as I said, it's very often not used um, in spoken and informal French. And it's really not the marker of negation. The marker of the negation is the pas in this case. But there are other negators. Um, and so another common one, a relatively common one is plus. Plus has many meanings, but in uh, a negative, uh, in a negation sense, it means no longer. Elle ne porte plus de lunettes suggests that um, she used to wear glasses, but um, now um, she doesn't anymore. Uh, so she no longer wears glasses. But note that in this case too, uh, the negator comes after the verb, just like pas. Then we have some other negators like jamais, uh, which is used in the using the same uh, syntax and means never, so he never wears glasses. We have also rien, which means nothing. Uh, elle n'a rien, she has nothing. Uh, aucun, when, which um, also means, uh, well, means none or no single. And uh, in this case, il n'a aucun accessoire, he has no accessory. Uh, accessoire is masculine, which means that we have aucun um, as the masculine form here. But aucune uh, would be the form, so with an extra e, that we would use if this were a feminine noun. And so this is important for later. Um, all of these other negators are invariable, so they don't have any other forms, they're not conjugated in any way. But aucun um, will uh, need to match uh, the noun phrase that follows, so um, aucun, aucune. And then we have a couple more negators, which are, I've put old usage, um, which are less common nowadays in contemporary French, but you'll still find them, um, certainly in written language in particular, but um, perhaps also in some cases in spoken French. Uh, point, uh, which is similar to pas, um, elle ne portait point de lunettes, um, she um, didn't wear any glasses. And here, il ne portait guère de lunettes, uh, to me this sounds even more old-fashioned, um, but is similar in the sense of um, he didn't wear any glasses. And those would be additional negators, and these ones are also invariable, um, so they only have this one form. So in reality, this is very much a summary, a uh, very uh, broad overview of negation in French. It's a little bit more complex than what I'm uh, uh, outlining here. If you want to find out more, I recommend you pick um, a good grammar of French and have a look at how things work in detail. But um, the good thing is, for our purposes, is that this pattern that we've observed of the ne or n apostrophe coming, if it comes at all, before the verb, and then the negator, most often pas, but some others also coming after the verb, 
um, is something that we find across all types of sentences, uh, whether they're declarative, whether they're imperatives, questions, or sort of exclamations. And you can see this here that we always have this pattern. So even in a question form, the ne comes before the verb and then the pas um, comes after the verb. And so this is going to be uh, really important for our query. So imagine uh, our aim is to investigate negation in online communication in contemporary French of France, for instance. If this were our research aim, um, there are two questions that we might want to answer. The first one could be, when is ne or n apostrophe used and when is it dropped? Um, so this is interesting because uh, if we're looking at online communication, this will include a lot of written communication, say on forums, um, on social media, for instance. And so it's interesting to see whether the written norms of, um, are used or whether more spoken forms are used and to what extent this is reflected in the use or non-use of ne or n apostrophe in negated uh, verb forms. And then um, we might want to know which negators are used. Uh, we suspect that pa is going to be by far the most frequent, um, but which other negators are used in uh, online communication in, in contemporary French and how frequently are they used? And of course, we can then see uh, with which negators is the N, E or N apostrophe still used in online communication or when is it most likely to be dropped? And we can also look at which verbs are negated in which ways. And these are questions that we can very much answer with a corpus. So how can we find these negated verbs in a corpus automatically tagged in Sketch Engine using corpus query language? Well, I first of all suggest that if this is your first time using CQL, uh, you might want to check out this video uh, first or afterwards, uh, which gives you uh, really the basics of how CQL works in Sketch Engine with an example in English. Um, but for now, we're going to um, go back to our example of negation in French and um, let's go to Sketch Engine uh, to find out more. So you need to log into Sketch Engine and then what we're going to do is we're going to look at what, which corpora of French are available in Sketch Engine and there is this French corpus of um, 88,000 um, SMS or, or text messages and this is what we're going to be looking at for this example but you could pick any corpus of French and then we're going to go to the concordance and we're going to make, it might be under basics to start off with, we're going to go to the advanced tab and pick CQL corpus query language, which enables us to uh, make a much more detailed search, uh, much more complex search query. So if we think back to our negation uh, forms in French, we expect a verb to occur after perhaps a ne or an apostrophe. And certainly after the verb, we expect one of these negators, pas, plus, jamais, rien, aucun, and so on and so forth. What I suggest we do is we start with uh, one corpus query to find out uh, when negation is used with ne, and, and then we'll have a second query when it's used without ne. Okay, so let's start with the first token which can be either ne or n apostrophe. So a token is always separated by these squared brackets. So I've inserted a pair of squared brackets and we're interested in the word forms n, e, like ne, or, and for the or, we need the pipe symbol, which is over here, pipe n apostrophe. And uh, we uh, enclose these two word forms in the quotation marks. And if we search for this, then we'll find uh, word forms uh, ne and an apostrophe. Now this is um, SMS, so people don't necessarily write all of the punctuation uh, in the standard way. And so I'm wondering whether it might be worth making this apostrophe optional. And to do that, I'm gonna add a question mark behind the apostrophe, which makes the apostrophe optional. And if I search for that now, then I have forms um, like we just had, an apostrophe N-E, but I will probably somewhere have, like here, 
in Yappa, um, this particular user did not um, use an apostrophe over here. If you're wondering why I've got all of these funny uh, things in grey at the bottom, um, I'm showing the lemma and the part of speech tag um, below each token. And you could toggle that with the view option here. And you can either select or unselect lemma and tag. So if I unselect it now, then I've only got uh, the word forms. And if you're finding this format difficult to read, you can choose the sentence format and this gives you the full sentence. This, can, this is then followed by the verb, so a second token. And now we don't know which verb, it could be any verb, so we're going to use tag, which means the part of speech tag that um, we're looking for. And we don't, I don't expect you to know all of the tags off by heart, so you click on tags here. And you can see that we're interested in a verb, and so we can pick this uh, v dot asterisk. Uh, we can simply click on it, and it will add it here immediately. Again, this needs to be in quotation marks. So this means that we're searching for any verb form, and that means a tag that starts with a v. It must be a verb, and then whatever kind of verb. We're interested in all verbs um, that are preceded by n, e, or n apostrophe. So here we have our very simple query. Let's see how we get on. So we're now seeing, and I'm going to switch back to the quick mode, uh, we're now seeing uh, verbs that are negated with uh, n, e, or n apostrophe, or just the n. Um, and this seems to be working uh, very well. We now need to add the negator, and so we need to add the next token. And this um, can be a word again, and we know that the most common is pa. And if we were to search this, then we would have all of the instances that are followed by the negator pa. But of course, there are others as we saw. So um, using the pipe symbol, we can add the others like plus, like point like jamais, and so on and so forth. And this will give us all of the various forms. Here we have jamais, for instance, um, another jamais, but most of them, as you can see, are pas. And the next thing we can do is we can add aucun. Now, for now, I'm just going to have aucun to show you what happens if that's what we do. And uh, we then have seven hits in this corpus. But if you remember, aucun will need to match the case um, of the noun that follows. And so at the moment, we're only looking at forms that have a male noun phrase that comes next. So actually, rather than word, here we should use lemma, because then we will have all forms of uh, aucun, including here, for instance, feminine. Je n'ai aucune volonté. Volonté, will, is a feminine noun, and so aucune is what comes here. And uh, this seems to be uh, more effective, and we now have 14 hits. So the other forms that we had, um, like pas, and rien, and plus, and jamais, they're all invariable, so we can use the lemma, it doesn't make a difference. The lemma and the word form is the same, and we can add all of the ones that we're interested in here. There were a few old-fashioned guerre and point. So if we now look this up, we see je ne suis pas, je n'arrive pas, etc. This assumes that we never have anything between n, e, or n apostrophe and the verb. Let's check this assumption by adding any token in between ne and the verb. So it's just an empty set of squared brackets. And the reason why I'm inserting them this here is that this means any token could occur between ne and the verb. And we see that it does happen. For instance, here we have je ne te laisse pas tranquille. And then in the second example, les autres, je ne les ai pas vus, we have les, so we've got a pronoun that's been inserted between ne and e. And same thing here, here we have the L apostrophe, another pronoun that's in there, um, e, uh, also a pronoun, and here too. So what we can see is that this can occur. It is possible to have an additional token 
here. Now, if that's the case, we need to account for that. And so we need to have uh, this possibility in our query. Now, of course, it doesn't always happen. So if I uh, launch this query, I have 555 uh, hits, but of course there are many more um, these kinds of negated forms. So we make this token optional by adding a question mark behind it. So now this token is optional. This means that we should now get many more hits. Uh, yes, uh, 2,600. And now we have forms um, that are more uh, typical, the ones that have ne just before the verb, je ne suis pas. Um, but we also have some which have like here, je ne te laisse pas. Um, now at the moment we're saying any, any um, token could occur between ne and pas. This might not actually be um, necessary or it might not reflect uh, what is really happening. We can find out exactly which um, token occurs most frequently by searching again for these uh, 555 examples and then looking at um, the frequency. We can then look at the tags so what we can see is how frequent each set of tag is and uh, well, we can see the negated particle, so the ne, uh, ne, and then this is this extra token and then here's the verb which starts with V and then again Rn for our pas, plus, point, guerre, uh, etc. Which means that we're interested in what the second um, token is and you can see that it's always uh, some kind of a pronoun, it's a P. Uh, P starts with a pronoun, it seems to be mostly PP, and in fact it's actually always PP. Um, is this all of our examples? No, there are 194, so I'm going to check. Yes, so the vast majority of all of the ones that I can see so far are PP. Um, so what we can do is we can actually go back to our query, and rather than say this can be any token, we can be more precise and say this should actually be a personal pronoun. So the tag is PP something something. So this um, dot asterisk means any kind of personal pronoun. First form, second form, polite, not polite, um, anything goes. But specifically um, this type of personal pronoun. And of course it's still optional so we're going to add the question mark behind it. And so now we have a query that should find all of these um, types of negated verb forms with a ne or n apostrophe or n without the apostrophe. So we now should get um, the full set. We have 2,653. Uh, we can see a nice range, uh, lots of different verbs and some different negators as well. This is showing us uh, the results in order. In order to get a good overview, it's always a good idea to take a random sample and shuffle the lines. So now we can see different examples and check that our query is working well. And it seems to be working very well. And these are all examples of negated verb forms with ne or an apostrophe. So if we're interested in uh, finding how many occur with and without? Uh, well, with uh, the ne, we've already found out. And without, we can remove this. And of course, we can also remove this token, which we um, no longer need. So now we have verb followed by the negator. And um, if we search here, we'll find uh, 21,000. Um, but the problem is, that we still have the ones that have an E in front because we're not excluding these. Now we could do um, a little bit of subtraction perhaps, but um, probably a better way in terms of uh, corpus query um, language would be to add a token before the verb, but say that this token can be anything except the word ne or n apostrophe. So whereas before we had word equals, now we can have word exclamation mark equals, and this means this word should not equal, in this case, ne or n apostrophe. And now we're gonna have fewer occurrences, and we're gonna have fewer than 21,000, 
because we're excluding the ones that have um, the N or E or N apostrophe in front. Now this is quite good, but if you remember, we saw that sometimes um, the NE comes not immediately before the verb, but it comes um, two words before the verb. And so we could copy and paste this to ensure that the NE doesn't occur just before the verb, nor does it occur two to the left of the verb. So that's what this is doing now. And this is going to lead to a few less results. But this is uh, more accurate in that this um, is probably exactly what we're looking for. Actually, I'm seeing on ne va jamais, so there isn't no here. Let me check. Ah, because I have a typo. I forgot the E. So this is important. Always go and check the concordance lines um, to see that you're not making mistakes before you um, pick up the numbers over here. Always go and look at the concordance lines to check that your query is working well. And I really recommend taking a random sample um, regularly so that you can see different examples and you're not always looking at the same examples and thinking your query is fine, whereas actually um, it's problematic. So now we really do have um, negated verb forms that don't have ne or n in front of the verb. And not only just immediately before the verb, but even two before the verbs. So this is how um, we can look up negation uh, using Corpus Query Language in Sketch Engine. If you want to find out more about how to use Corpus tools, I have a few more videos um, that you might find useful on Sketch Engine and a few other tools as well.